I'm going to do a quick recording just to show how you would handle this. A customer gave me uh, a job and wanted to learn how to do this really quickly and this is a screenshot so it's res low resolution and I'm just doing it just to show him the process. It's pretty basic and it looks like the customer wants this to be a uh, low cost job so two colors and uh, so the first thing you want to do is kind of select all copy and break this apart but let's assume um, and I had to distort it and straighten it out and stuff because it was an angled photo of his screen um, but let's assume that, that your artwork came in a flat uh, in a background in layers or you had this artwork in a vector program and you brought it into uh, Photoshop to separate uh, and you got it broken down already um, so I got my type and my photo there's the just the type and there's just the photo pretty simple process um, <clears throat> so for the type itself you can just hold down the command key or the control key depending on and then come into channels um, and then click on right next to the trash can to create a new layer have black in the foreground type with the D key and you'll see that it toggles back and forth the D key is default for black and white and then the X key is toggling back and forth between the foreground and background color so you want foreground in the, for in the front in the you want black in the foreground and then option delete to fill that new channel color that a spot color click in the color area call that drag it up to white then this is just for visual appearances it's going to show up on your screen as white 100 percent opacity name it base white And then um, let's put in a shirt color just so we can see it. And then you'll see that that white is on there. Now this is a little gray matter and again this is I just copied this over from the low resolution photo just to uh, do the example. And all I'm doing is going to levels that would be under uh, see uh, select where is levels that'd be under editing image adjust levels and curves um, I like to use curves but levels does a quick job of knocking out the uh, highlight range this is the highlight range over here you see this little gray data in this ramp you want to burn that out come over a little further and you can see how much it eats away at the artwork fill it in solid bright white there you go and then come back into the RGB layers click on the photo if you hold down the command key you're selecting every little pixel in that artwork if you draw a marquee tool you're not selecting everything you're just selecting what's in that box so when you hold down the command T or the control key and click on the layer, you're selecting every little pixel in that layer. Same in the channels also. Um, so here, when I have this selected, I'm going to copy, come into channels, and paste. Now, so I have the black part of that image. Let's say the shirt is a gray shirt and I want to duplicate that paste again well I said duplicate but you want to create a new channel and then paste again while you still had it selected um, and then uh, with the selection back on you just take one and invert it there's other ways to do this 
six or seven other ways to do this, but this is a quick, easy way. I gotta answer this phone. Good morning, this is Dan with IDB. How can I help you? As I suspected, just a digitizer. Um, so, did I invert? Yep. So this, let's say this is the white, and this is the black, 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 make it a spot color. And so in a nutshell, this would actually be added to this channel. And I'll do that now can delete that um, and there there you have it I'm going to change this to gray so let's say it's a gray shirt charcoal gray or something now that looks pretty nice but that's not going to be how it prints it's gonna with gain it's gonna print a little bit heavier and if somebody's on a manual press it's gonna print even heavier than that so um, you know, and depending on how you print, it could really blow out. And let's say, depending on how bad your screens were, um, your screens, if you don't hold all your details, can end up coming out like that. Just an example. Um, so that's, even though your separations might be right, your screen's got to be right also. So what I like to do is take the black separation and uh, really get down to the solid dark areas, beef those up, and I'm going to knock that out of the underbase. Hold down the command key, click on the base, delete. So now you got more of a true shirt color coming through there. And you got a straight hard black running in these dark shadows to the shirt color with no white underbase under that. Uh, it's one of the most common issues with uh, prints is there are too much underbase data left in the seps. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, in this black screen, you then want to compensate and adjust for dot gain and burn this out. A good starting point is clicking the mid-tone range right at 50%. Use your arrow keys and uh, drop that down to 40%, let's say. I just drug it down. Um, 40 is a pretty good number to drop it from 50 to 40, compensating for dot gain. And then the white screen I want to beef that up so that I'm running some gray color up underneath that black. So I beef up the shadow tones so that I get rich white underneath the rich gray. And that should turn out pretty decent on press. Um, that's it in a nutshell. Gracias.